Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the hardware limitations of Hyper-V in Windows Server 2016. By the end of this video you will have a good understanding of the scalability of Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V and what can be achieved with the technology. So let's get started. With Windows Server 2016, Microsoft has seriously ramped up the hardware limitations of Hyper-V. As a result, Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V is the most scalable version of Hyper-V to date. To begin with, I'll look at the hardware limitations for a Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V host server. Later on in the video, I will look at the limitations for virtual machines. Each physical Windows Server 2016 host server running Hyper-V can support up to 512 logical processors, increased from 320 logical processors in Windows Server 2012 R2. Furthermore, each Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V server can support up to 2048 virtual processors, which can be allocated out to virtual machines. In terms of RAM memory, each physical Windows Server 2016 host server can address up to 24 terabytes of RAM, a serious ramp up from Windows Server 2012 R2's upper limit of 4 terabytes of RAM. As you can see, Windows Server 2016 can scale amazingly well. So well, in fact, that it's hard to imagine a single host computer ever coming close to reaching these limits. With the host machines now covered, let's have a look at the scalability of virtual machines. Just like Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V allows the administrator to create two types of virtual machine. These are Generation 1 virtual machines and Generation 2 virtual machines. Generation 1 virtual machines are the older standard and have existed since Hyper-V first made its debut in Windows Server 2008. Generation 2 virtual machines are the newest standard of virtual machine and were first introduced in Windows Server 2012 R2. Each Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V host server can support up to 1024 virtual machines. These can be Generation 1 virtual machines, Generation 2 virtual machines, or a combination of both. In the real world, it's unlikely that you'll have that many virtual machines running on a single host computer, but it does pay to know that 1024 is the maximum number of supported virtual machines per host. For each Generation 1 virtual machine created, the administrator can assign up to 64 virtual processors to it. Each Generation 1 virtual machine can also address up to 1 terabyte of RAM memory. For storage, Generation 1 virtual machines support two types of virtual hard disk, VHD virtual hard disks and VHDX virtual hard disks. The VHD virtual hard disk is the older standard of virtual hard disk and has existed since Hyper-V was first developed. VHD virtual hard disks are limited to a maximum size of 2 terabytes. VHDX virtual hard disks are the newer standard of virtual hard disk and were first introduced in Windows Server 2012. VHDX virtual hard disks scale better than the older VHD disks up to 64 terabytes. Also, according to Microsoft, VHDX virtual hard disks are far more resilient than VHD disks and are less prone to data corruptions. With Generation 2 virtual machines, the administrator can allocate up to 240 virtual processors to each virtual machine and up to 12 terabytes of RAM. For storage, Generation 2 virtual machines only support the newer VHDX virtual hard disks they do not support VHD virtual hard disks. With the basics now covered, let's take a closer look at the virtual hardware supported by Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines. First is the number of virtual IDE controllers. Virtual IDE controllers are only found in Generation 1 virtual machines. They're not supported by Generation 2 virtual machines. 
Each Generation 1 virtual machine can support up to two virtual IDE controllers and these cannot be removed from the virtual machine nor can more virtual IDE controllers be added. IDE controllers are required by Generation 1 virtual machines in order to boot an operating system from a virtual hard disk. The reason why Generation 2 virtual machines do not support IDE controllers is because this functionality has been added to the virtual SCSI controller instead. Unlike IDE controllers, virtual SCSI controllers are supported in both Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines. Both generations of virtual machine support up to four of these SCSI controllers per virtual machine. What's more, SCSI controllers can be added to and removed from virtual machines as required by the administrator. Generation 2 virtual machines require a SCSI controller for boot functionality and data storage, whereas Generation 1 virtual machines can only use them for data storage. Next up, we have the number of virtual network adapters. Both Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines can support up to 8 of these network adapters. These network adapters can be added and removed from the virtual machine as desired. Virtual network adapters should not be confused with the legacy network adapter. Legacy network adapters are only supported by Generation 1 virtual machines, of which up to 4 can be added. Generation 2 virtual machines do not support legacy network adapters at all. This is because the functionality of the legacy network adapter has been incorporated into the virtual network adapter for Generation 2 virtual machines. Next we have the virtual fibre channel adapters. Virtual fibre channel adapters are supported by both Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines, of which a maximum of 4 can be added. Virtual fibre channel adapters are required to connect your virtual machines directly to fibre channel storage arrays. The last pieces of virtual hardware I will look at are for Generation 1 virtual machines only. Namely, virtual COM ports and the virtual floppy drive. These do not apply to Generation 2 virtual machines. Generation 1 virtual machines support two COM ports and one virtual floppy drive. Neither of these can be removed from the virtual machine. Due to neither of these devices being used that much, Microsoft decided to drop support for them entirely in their Generation 2 virtual machines. With such tremendous scalability, it's hard to imagine Hyper-V in Windows Server 2016 being unable to meet the needs of most administrators. So far, I've looked at the limitations for a single Hyper-V host. Before I finish up this video, I would lastly like to look at Hyper-V clustering. Hyper-V, like most Microsoft technologies, can be clustered for high availability. If you have just one Hyper-V host server, if the physical host server were to go offline, the virtual machines running on that host would also go offline. When you cluster Hyper-V, you essentially combine multiple Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V host servers together and create what is called a failover cluster. When your hosting servers are clustered like this, they're all responsible for running the virtual machines in your environment together. And if one of the hosts in the cluster were to fail, the surviving hosts will continue to run the virtual machines. With Windows Server 2016, you can have up to 64 physical host computers in a single cluster, and each cluster can support up to 8,000 virtual machines. I'm sure you'll agree that Hyper-V is an amazing scalable technology and is more than capable of meeting the virtualization needs for most organizations. Well, that covers the hardware limitations of Hyper-V. In the next video, I will look at the requirements for installing and running Hyper-V on Windows Server 2016. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. For more Windows Server 2016 videos, check out our YouTube page. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified of new videos when we release them. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.